Mr. Naresh Kantur. He is founder and MD at Incosys Private Limited. He has engineering background with PG Diploma Business Management. He is engaged in implementing automation and robotics projects for manufacturing and other industries in India and overseas. Starting ca- career with Appropriate Automation Promotion Laboratory, a Government of India R&D Center for Applied Automation, Mr. Naresh worked with multinational companies in India and overseas in the field of industrial automation equipment and subsequently as automation specialist. For training and consulting, he enjoys sharing the knowledge and gained over four decades with hands-on experience in the industrial automation. Today, Mr. Naresh will talk about industrial and collaborative robots application and successful integration in the manufacturing. Let's welcome Mr. Naresh. Today, industry is poised without any option to adopt automation and robotics. The era has come and next five years are going to be robotics era in India and where everybody will have no choice. Either you do it or you are out of business if you don't do this automation and robotics. Now today I'm going to talk about uh, what exactly the robotics can do and as I write, as, as I mentioned always in the forum that it is only the imagination which limits the use of uh, robotics and take you all to the session where I will elaborate on the concept of uh, collaborative robots which are relatively new concept into the robotics and how collaborative robots are different uh, compared to robots and what benefit they bring in into the picture, not only in industry, but also warehouse automation or uh, complete e- e-commerce industry. As Trishna mentioned in the beginning, that Reliance has placed an order of $1 million worth of uh, automation to advert to have 5G-oriented uh, AGVs and other solutions. The collaborative automation, as the definition goes, is defined as a solution which allow people and robots to work together in the close proximity. Like you don't have to be afraid of robots when you work with the collaborative robots. Or it is also defined as a robot intended to physically interact with humans in a shared workplace. What exactly we have been seeing, if you see on this picture, that we have robots everywhere and you would have seen in many automotive industry in India, particularly, who were very first to adopt robots, that all the robots have been put inside the cage. And, they, and the human being is sitting outside the cage as if robots are wild animals and it would be very dangerous to use them. Yes, of course, if somebody violates the robot safety and comes closer to the robots, they are going to hit you hard and it can cause you some severe injury and there have been few cases globally and also in India where some uh, operators have died because of the impact given by the robot because of having bypassed the safety caging which has been provided for the robot. And now let us look at this scenario. We have two separate scenarios. On a screen you will see a robot doing all the welding operations on a car and where is nobody is present. When I say nobody, no human being is present. Whereas on the other hand, you, you see a hundreds of people working onto assembly line where they, there is no robot and no machine, uh, robotic machine is involved because you can't put them uh, together. So at one end, we are able to use the capacity of the robot, whereas other end, we are only dependent upon the human skills. There was a study conducted by MIT and where they have mentioned, if we are able to combine robots and human being together, then probably we are able to recover 85% of the inefficiencies which are brought up by the human being or what we in engineering solutions we call as a muda or a waste of time. So 85% of that wastage of time can be recovered if we are able to combine both robots and human being together. Or let us say we let robots do what they do best and we let human being do what they do best. So this concept of collaborative robot came into the picture. In this screen, what you see, all the operators are doing their job and you would see a few robots hanging from the roof. Like if this is the robot there standing and there's another robot there. So robots are doing all those jobs which require a lot of muscular power, repeated job where intelligence has been built into the robot and operators are doing more intelligent job, which otherwise robot would find it very difficult to maneuver. So what we are doing, 
we are letting the operators do all the intelligent job and mundane job like nut tightening or dispensing of adhesive etc are being transferred to uh, robots to handle now let us look at the difference between what exactly we differentiate between a industrial robot and how we differentiate between a collaborative robot when we talk about industrial robot for one thing is very important that they are bulky and they have to be kept inside the cages for the safety operations whereas when you look into the collaborative robots they have been designed to be lightweight they have been designed to work on to the uh, low power ranges and they have been designed to work close to a human being so let us say if somebody comes close to a collaborative robot and there is a impact there is a impact and like when we clap together that is called somewhere around 50 newton uh, impact and robot with that impact will stop and will not hurt the human being or the operator and once you are away you put a restart button the robot immediately starts from where where you have started second thing is the programming which is done with the collaborative robots have been made so simple that anyone i say anyone who can have intelligence to use a smartphone which i feel anybody from fifth class onward even younger children has the capability to use the smartphone is able to uh, run the robot we have seen cases where we have iti uh, trained technicians whom we have been able to train and let them operate the robot in a matter of couple of days so that type of simplicity comes into the robot to operate them now let us say when we use industrial robot what are the items we require number one we need a huge space to put them because they are bulk in size then to uh, have tools at, at the end of the arm tooling where you need to put the gripper and other things then you need safety scanners because they are bulky they run very fast and have a very huge impact as a moment of inertia then you need a high three phase power supply some 3 kilowatt 4 kilowatt energy guzzling and you must have a complete uh, fencing and guarding around it to save the human being you have have light curtain or software licenses or integrated programming so these are all necessary things which are required when you have to work on a industrial robotics platform whereas when you look into the collaborative robot what you need is a simple pedestal and those pedestal could be a pipe of the size of 100 by 100 uh, square pipe and just end of the arm tool you don't need any safety guarding or safety curtain light curtain so it gives you a lot of advantage into implementation of the of the robot however the one must understand that collaborative robots are expensive compared to industrial robots Let's, let us say if a 5 kg industrial robot in indian environment would cost around 14 lakhs but the same capacity robot or collaborative robot is going to cost you around 18 lakhs but when it is compared as a cost of ownership and cost of running then in the long range collaborative robot tends out to be cheaper related to industrial robot and when we say i mentioned that as per the mit study 85% of reduction of workers idle time and that is a huge amount and we have seen practically in the industry where uh, they, they have installed robots in the present environment the productivity has gone as high as 20% and that is a very huge amount because robots would not require to have go for lunch robot would not require to go to bio breaks robot will not require uh, to run as per the mood of the operator So they would run continuously same work same time same speed and up to 85% of the waste time can be recovered for productivity some of the applications which are being done which are the out of the box application which i have shown here like the one these are all examples from automotive where a car seat is being manufactured where the stretching is one job and stitching is one job so operator does the stretching because as per the profile and robot does the stitching another uh, screen you have is the bolt tightening operation which require force and you leave it to robot to do the bolt tightening and at the same time it does check whether all the bolts have been tightened whether any bolt is missing and also it makes sure that there is a complete uh, control over the torque that has been put then loading and loading on the machine where it can be loaded constantly without any operator interferences like i mentioned earlier they can be operated on a single pose easy to program have a huge flexibility can be mounted either 
on the floor or on the pedestal, from the roof, from the wall, and wait light. These are some of the applications which are out of the box application as per the imagination. The one application on top left is a robot assisting a doctor in surgery. Now, if you uh, know that surgeon would always require a shadow less light. In this case, a camera on the robot monitors the movement of the hand of the surgeon and accordingly adjusts the light so that the uh, doctor is able to operate without any problem. The next screen is where robot has been trained to uh, cook like a chef and is able to deliver the dishes of your taste day in day out with the same recipe and same taste. You would have seen a, a video which had gone viral earlier on the WhatsApp also that in Singapore they have put a couple of robots to make omelette in a hotel and those uh, robots are capable of giving you omelette of your taste. And in the breakfast table in Singapore when I went there and saw there is a long queue at the robot to take omelette because people wish to see how robot is able to make the uh, same omelette. Now, on the other side, you see the robots are being used in the bakery industry for handling the bread. Or below, you see robots are being used to give a physiotherapy. Those of you under physiotherapy would know that what physiotherapist does is moves your hand or injured leg to a particular degree of angle with a particular job. So, physiotherapists need to program and the robot will take the rest of the job. Another example is in a bar in Holland, where in the restaurant in the bar, they have put robot. You go and place your order. I need a Shiva's Regal Patiala pack. It goes up and uh, serves you the liquor as per your requirement and you pay and you go off. Now here also you see a massage being given by a physiotherapy a silicon pad. And if or a skilled dog can attend to many patients simultaneously and the routine job which is torque and force control or distance control is carried on by the robots and in all these applications you would see that none of the cobot is with a fencing each and every cobot is working independently and human beings are around handling that and handling without any difficulty this is what I was talking about video of baking omelette. This is there on the YouTube, so I won't play it here. And recently, the Polobrity robots have also been used to uh, work as a co-pilot into a plane. And this is a real life uh, photograph taken inside the cockpit. You never know, a couple of years from now when it is perfected, you get an announcement. I am so-and-so, you are the captain speaking, and I have a, this and this robot as a running as a co-pilot and it is being very effectively tried. Recently, the polarity robots have also been used into various uh, matches where multiple cameras are mounted on the robots and a single intelligent cameraman sitting in the control room controls all the cameras and uses intelligence in deciding what photographs to be taken. So these are some other examples of inspection and uh, what exactly is required. The one on the right, you would see yellow and black line on the bottom. And this yellow and black line only defines that this is the area where robot is working. Please don't come in. If you come, robot will stop. And once you go out, robot will start again as a safety requirement. This robot, there's some safety standards which they follow. And ISO TS15066 is the standard where robots are done. Then they certain videos, then there's no time to play those videos. So. I will leave you only with one video which may be of interest at this evening time that how robots have been successfully used even to serve the wine. So instead of wine, it is going to an industrial application. Well, so many industries across India and globally are using these polarity robots. And uh, if you try to use the polarity robot, you will find it is very easy to use and in the long run, it becomes uh, very effective. Thanks.